we use a tool called a reaction coordinate diagram to document energy changes as a chemical reaction occurs. For a spontaneous reaction, the reactants will be at a higher free energy than the products. But the reaction coordinate diagram doesn't just show the energies of reactants and products. It shows the energies of all species between the reactants and products, including intermediates and transition states, as the reaction occurs. And we document the reaction occurring, or keep track of it, using what's called a reaction coordinate. This is some geometric coordinate that changes as the reaction occurs. Let's look at our example reaction from the last slide and see how it translates into a reaction coordinate diagram. The exact appearance of reaction coordinate diagram depends on how the mechanism of the reaction actually occurs. And for the time being, take my word for it that this reaction occurs in a single elementary step involving displacement of the bromide anion by the hydroxide anion. As the hydroxide approaches this molecule and displaces the bromide, the energy of the assembly of molecules changes. First, the energy of the molecules increases to a maximum. This maximum value is what we call the transition state for the elementary step. And every elementary step is associated with a transition state. We'll talk about this later, so you don't need to worry about it too much for now, but the structure of this transition state looks something like this. A partial bond exists between the hydroxide oxygen and the carbon, and a partial bond exists between that carbon and the bromide as well, with partial negative charges on hydroxide and on bromide. As the transition state converts to the product, the energy of the entire molecular assembly decreases. The difference in energy between the reactants and the transition state is referred to as the activation energy. And in organic chemistry, you often see this represented as delta G double dagger, where the double dagger refers to the transition state. The overall free energy change of the reaction is represented as the difference between reactant and product energies, and we've seen this already. It's delta G naught. Transition states are peaks on the reaction coordinate diagram, but we can also have valleys within a reaction coordinate diagram. Valleys, like the one shown here, correspond to intermediates in the reaction mechanism. Stable species with discrete lifetime that eventually transform further to reach the products. The main utility of a reaction coordinate diagram is that it shows us how stability changes over the course of a reaction mechanism. What we call a stability trend is a progression in the stability of a series of related molecules. We can trace that progression to a key difference between the molecules, represented here in general as a change from R1 to R2 to R3 to R4. In this hypothetical example, the species containing R1 is the least stable, meaning it has the highest free energy, while the species containing R4 is the most stable, meaning it has the lowest free energy. It's very common for chemical reactions to involve the transformation of, for example, one of these groups into another. Notice that given an understanding of this trend, we can draw a conclusion about whether the reaction that converts, for example, the R1-containing molecule to the R2-containing molecule is thermodynamically favored or not. In this case, it is. On the other hand, the conversion of the R3-containing molecule to the R2-containing molecule, which would involve an increase in free energy, based on this trend, is disfavored. By answering the question, in what way do the R groups differ, for example, in reactants and products, we see then that we can make a judgment about the thermodynamic favorability of the reaction. And there are a limited number of ways in which the R groups can differ. There are a limited number of stability trends. In order of importance, we have electronegativity, especially for charge-bearing atoms, resonance delocalization, which is associated with the spreading of electrons. We might have a difference in whether a molecule is resonance active or not. Molecules can differ in hybridization, and this is especially important in contexts where a lone pair is reacting. Groups can differ in inductive effects or steric effects. These are by far the five most important stability factors, and we'll look at each in turn in the remainder of the videos in this series.